At First Baptist Church, our mission is to follow our Lord Jesus Christ and to lead all others to a joyful life with Him. Our hope is that you will encounter Jesus Christ in such a way that you will have joyful news to go and tell. Turn with me now to our reverse text for the week. It's in your bulletin. It's Matthew 5, 13 through 16. We're going to read that aloud together. So let's stand and we'll read. This then is the text for today. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. May God bless the reading of His Word. A burned out bulb is useless. And we quickly discard our burned out bulbs. You know, this time of year as we hang Christmas lights, burned out bulbs are particularly annoying. Especially if you have those old strands of light that will react to one burned out bulb in the series. And the whole section of lights refuses to come on because one is no longer pulling its weight, brightening Christmas. And, and in fact, we're in, when you're in that situation, that, that burned out bulb is such an exasperation that we rejoice when we find the one bulb so that we can trash it. But nobody ever considers the feelings of that burned out bulb. <laughs> but maybe we should say it this way. So many of us and so many of those around us feel like that burned out bulb. Something worthless. Something beyond help. We, we feel like an inanimate object that's been discarded because we're, we're no longer any use. And you have to understand, this is the way our world works. That here in, in American society, we are the height of consumerism. And with a consumeristic lifestyle, everything, is made to be discarded. Everything that we buy is made cheaply so that it will soon give out and be replaced by another. You see, this, this, is, this is what we do. We, we build this, this habit of disposal of stuff. Everything is quickly trashed. And what happens in turn when, when this is our culture that quickly turns from discarding stuff that we no longer have use for to discarding people we no longer want in our lives. You see, we, we discard those we see as no longer useful, and in the same way, we find ourselves getting discarded over and over again. See, that's the way the world operates. But that's not how heaven operates. When, when we think about the kingdom of God, and, and this, this coming kingdom that, that we, we are a part of, the power is in resurrection, not disposal. You see, 
when, when, a, when a burned out bulb appears, we discard it. But when God touches a burned out bulb, it's resuscitated. A, a resurrection of life. There is no death that this coming kingdom cannot overcome. We, as people who follow Jesus, are a people of resurrection. A, a, a resurrected people who know the resurrected Christ, who bring resurrection with us as we go in His name. See, I'm not talking about strands of Christmas lights. You're talking about the people of, of relationships, God's purpose for His children. See, God's way is a way of resurrection and bringing life where life has been absent. Bringing life where, where death has overcome. This is God's way to pull you out of the trash heap and make you an heir of the kingdom of God. You know, in our text this week, Jesus gives us two analogies that point us in the same direction. One is salt, the other light. And, and with those, Jesus sets a stark contrast with both of those. Jesus talks about a salt that's lost its taste. And on some level, that, that doesn't even make sense. But on another, there are so many people who, who feel this way as a salt with no saltiness, as if there is no longer any purpose in this life. There's no longer any way forward. There's, there's no usefulness left. So that as Jesus talks about this salt with no taste, he says it's thrown out as trash and trampled on because it's worthless. See, the language Jesus uses here in that contrast it's how most people feel, even in the church. I, I'm no longer good for anything. My, my worth has gone. And Jesus uses this, this other image too. It's, it's a candle that has been covered. And if you are a candle that has been covered, you no longer have any purpose. That candle that has been covered might as well be a burned out bulb or have no wick. What, what's the point? You see, there's this great opportunity here that as we recognize that, that we are a burned out bulb, you, you begin to, to see and, and realize where you are that, that you, you can't find hope, you can't find purpose without our God. This is, this is when we begin to realize that the world tramples us. The world discards us. And as you begin to realize that the institutions of this world and, and the way of this world, of our culture, of our society, is, is to discard you. It's only as we begin to realize these things that we look up and understand that our Creator is our only hope. That there's no hope found in this world apart from what the Creator God is doing among us in His incarnate Son and by His Holy Spirit. That's where our only hope resides. The one who made us, the one who knows us from the inside out is the only one who can bring resurrection from death the only one who can bring purpose into our lives. And so in that despair of recognizing a worthlessness or, or the pain of being discarded in this world, then we turn to Him. And as we do, a burned out bulb begins to glow again. I would say there, there's often a misunderstanding though here where we will sometimes, knowingly or unknowingly, put ourselves in the place of God. We hear God say things like, you are salt. 
or, or something like, you are light. And we assume that this is something of ourselves, or we assume that this is, this is what we do, that we need to go and be more salty, or we need to go and be a little bit brighter, as if it was something that, that we could create. But a bulb in the trash can can't be any brighter. Right? See, th- those things, they're, they're not a reality fashioned by our hands. We're, we're not the creator these are things experienced in God and of God. This, this salt, this, this light of the world come from heaven and are from a direct relationship with God. You see, when you, when you think of salt, think, think of the common table salt that we put on our food that provides flavor, that, that brings to life taste. You know, we know in Scripture says that, that every good and perfect gift is, is from above. Even the flavor of our food is from above. The, the, the spices that we, we cook with, the, the herbs that we, we add to our meals, this is of God. These things are of creation. And, and they, they bring this, this new flavor to that which, which we eat. It's, it's God's provision for life at its fullest. A good meal is of the Lord, and, and we should thank Him for it. But I want you to, to recognize in that, beyond the temporal into the eternal, that it is, it is God who brings flavor into this life. Or, or without God, this life is flavorless, an existence that, that misses out on the joy of a savory life. Now, that, that may be a bit abstract. I don't know. We, we seem to like Jesus' second analogy more. I think we, we talk about Jesus' second analogy more, the, that of light. So Im- imagine with me a masterpiece, a, a painting by a deceased master. But as you imagine that painting... Imagine it in the dark. You see, when, when the painting is in the dark, it, it evokes nothing. It, it might as well not even be there. When, when the painting is covered in darkness, it only has this rumor of meaning. It, it's lost on people. But when you, when you have the right light focused on the painting, it begins to jump off the canvas. And this is the very thing that God does in our world. I want you to think of it this way. This world is a masterpiece of God. As, as He created and called this good, It was brilliant in all respects. The, the terrible problem is that, that sin brings this darkness, like a dense fog hanging over everything. And, and so many of us are, are walking around in darkness. And we never notice the, the intricacy or the vividness of creation. And one of the, the joys of following God is that He illumines this, this earth and he, he illumines this life in ways that we could never know on our own. See, without God, we're trying to assess the Mona Lisa by feeling it with our fingertips rather than seeing it in the light as it was intended. And, and our God created this world out of the, His eternal wisdom it's, it's, it's in this, this grand handiwork that creation was so. And, and it was fully intended, ordained by God, that you would be born. See, that, that you'd be knit together in your mother's womb by the sovereign one. You know, and though often we find ourselves in the dark on this, 
God created you with great care. I mean, you, you are of the hand of God. And, and you, you were blessed with talents and gifts to be used for His glory. When, when God created you, He did so intentionally and with purpose. You see, when we don't know Jesus, when we're not living in that, that light of Jesus Christ, we lose our sense of purpose and it drives us crazy. We, we bang our head against a wall trying to figure out what, what's going on with our lives. What, why do we feel worthless? We, we ask questions, why am I here? And, and, it, and it sends us in, in a spiral downward. When, when we're distant from the Christ. You see, the, our, our purpose in, in, in hope, it's, it's, it's lost when we're without Jesus. Just like a burned out bulb on the trash heap. Jesus, though, is, is our resurrection. A, a resurrecting God that comes in near Jesus can bring us back to life again, to, to burn brighter than we have ever burned before. And so that when Jesus says you are the light of the world, he, he means that in his restoration, in his resurrection, so that that's what you become. Look down with me at verse 16. So it's the last verse of reverse. So Matthew 5, verse 16. Jesus says, so then, let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. He says, that, this is your purpose. Your, your purpose in life is not for yourself. Th this is what we get backwards in the flesh. This is what we mess up on our own. When we're left to our own devices, we think the world revolves around us. And we do everything that we can to cater to our appetites, our whims, our desires, our flesh. And Jesus says, that's not the way this world works. You see, the wisdom of the Creator who set all of this in motion says that will lead to destruction. I mean, it seems counterintuitive, but, but God describes it in this way every time. That your life is meant to be lived for another. And, and, and when you start to see this life in this way, when, when our lives are, are given up for, for Jesus, life gains this new energy. Life is, is electrified when, when we surrender ourselves to Jesus Christ, I die daily. When, when we give life away, and that, that's where it starts, in, in giving our life over to the kingdom of God. But, but it goes even beyond that. As we re read in 5.16, as we hand it, our lives over to God, it, it, our lives are also then given away for the sake of another. Our lives are given away for the sake of our spouse. Our lives are given away for the sake of our neighbor. And, and what, what Scripture teaches is, is this. When, when we give our life away is when life begins to flourish. If, if you want to see life in, in the brightest colors possible and, and know this life to its fullest, you give your life away. If you want to know the vividness of existence, what it means to live in the light of Jesus Christ, you do good so that others will thank God. But you, you live and you work and you exist to bring glory unto the name of God. That you, you love and you serve and you bring mercy and compassion and peace with you wherever you go so that people look up and say, God is faithful. He says, you know, when you live life in this way, that's 
when life begins to make sense. Let's pray together. Lord, we we love you. Would you come and make life make sense? Lord, help us. Revive us, Father. We we need resurrection. We we need the, the coming of your spirit. Lord, heal us and make us whole again. It's in the name of our Lord and risen Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.